you're going to get a lot of questions about exponents. And the best way for me to help you answer these questions and understand different exponent rules uh, is just that to walk you actually through the rules themselves. So let's take a look at the first problem in your slides. Now, I'm just going to break this down and just let's look at four. Well, let's look at four to the power of three. Uh, what is that saying? Well, it's saying four should be multiplied by itself three times. So that's four times four times four. And four to the power of two is four should be multiplied by itself twice. So we have four times four. Now the very long-winded answer to this question right here is going to be, well, four to the power of two times four to the power of three is four times four times four times four. And you can see that that's four to the power of five. Now why is that important? Because there's an easier way than writing out in this long form the way I have to get the answer and that's shorthand if the bases are the same, in this case they are, they're both equal to four, then we can add the exponents. Four to the power of two plus three, well that gives us four to the power of five. So we didn't have to go through that intermediate step, we can just use this shorthand uh, rule to get the right answer. Now I mentioned to you that four is the base, so four is the base to the exponent. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, this is when we're multiplying one base times another. If I wrote four to the power of two plus four to the power of three, that is not going to be equal to four to the power of five. Now, if you're sitting there and you're going, yeah, of course it's not, that would be stupid. This is a common, common mistake students make many, many times. Very, very often students make this mistake. Uh, don't be one of them. Practice. Uh, practice so these rules become second nature and you'll never you'll never make a mistake like that but if you don't practice you think you won't make that mistake but when you're sitting in an exam you can't get the answer and you start to stress out and you start to panic those are the kinds of mistakes that students make I see it all the time now let's look at the next question the question at the bottom of your slides we've got a fraction well, if we've got a fraction raised to a power, it's still the same methodology. We've got three divided by five multiplied by itself three times. So I could write that out as three over five times three over five times three over five. Notice that I could also write it as three to the power of three over five to the power of three. What I want to say here is that the rules apply even if the base is a fraction. So don't be confused uh, if the base is a fraction. Also, keep in mind that the factor, or excuse me, the exponent is coming into the fraction. Now, what do we do when you see 4 raised to the power of negative 1? Well, that's actually another way of writing 1 over 4. So or another thing, um, what I'm used to thinking of is this is the inverse of 4. It's the inverse of 4. Now what if we have two factors that are multiplied by each other with negative, negative exponents? Well, there's a few, things, a few different ways I could rewrite this. One I could do is point out to you that we've got 4 raised to the power of negative 2. Well, that's like being raised to the power of 2 times negative 1. And we've got 4 to the power of 3 times negative 1. And so that's going to be like 1 over 4 to the power of 2 times 1 over 4 to the power of 3, because I can bring that negative in, switch the numerator and the denominator accordingly. And so another way I could write this, I've got 1 over 4 
multiply by itself how many times? Well, 2 plus 3, or 1 over 4 to the power of 5. That's what it looks like. More simply, I could say, well, I've got 4 to the negative 2 minus 3, which gives me 4 to the negative 5. Uh, all these different ways of writing are equivalent. I can add the exponents even if they're negative. I can add the exponents even if they're negative. What's 4 to the power of 0? Uh, you might be tempted to think that it's equal to 0, uh, but it's actually equal to 1. Why is it equal to 1? Well, we know that uh, 4, say, to the power of 2 minus 2, well, that should be equal to 4 times 4 times 1 over 4 times 1 over 4. Right? And that's going to be equal to 1. So 4 raised to the power of 0 is equal to 1. It's not equal to 0. It's actually, uh, it's actually equal to 1. Now, what about exponents? raised to uh, another exponent. So we've got 4 squared raised to the power of 3. Well, I can write that out like 4 squared times 4 squared times 4 squared. And that's equal to 4, you guessed it, 4 times 4 times 4 times 4. And this is equal to 4 to the power of 6. So if I have 4 squared raised to the power of 3, that's like having 4 raised to the power of 2 times 3, like so, and I end up with 4 to the power of 6. So uh, I don't have to do it this long way and write it all out. I can just jump to these rules, and I know that if I have an exponent raised to uh, another exponent, they're going to multiply each other. Okay, so those are some of the, those are the power rules that I wanted to emphasize to you. Now let's look at an example question from Alex. So we've got this messy bunch of exponents. We've got two unknown variables, an x and a y, and a bunch of exponents floating around. And it says write your answer without using negative exponents. So we have to transform every negative exponent into a positive exponent. How are we going to do that? Well, I'll start off by uh, dealing with this negative 3 exponent. And so what's that going to look like? Well, every factor in the bracket is going to be raised to the power of negative 3. So I've got 4 to the power of negative 3. I've got x to the power of negative 2 multiplied by negative 3. Right? We're going to multiply the exponents. And I've got y to the power of 3 multiplied by negative 3. So I'm just going to leave 4 to the power of negative 3 as it is for now. Then I'm going to multiply out these exponents. So we've got x to the power of 6. And we've got y to the power of negative 9. Now we need to get rid of the negative exponents. So any uh, factor that have, has a negative in its exponent is going to move to the denominator. So we're going to have 6 to the power, uh, or excuse me, x to the power of 6 over 4 cubed times y to the 9. Now Alex would like us to multiply out that 4 cubed, so we're going to have x to the power of 6. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 4 is 64. y9. And so there's our answer. Now we can take a look at Alex. Now I've been recording this video and uh, I already put the answer in Alex. Uh, I actually forgot to hit the record button so the answer is already in there. 
uh, but you can see that we have the correct answer. Uh, the correct answer, uh, just like we did on the slides, is x to the power of 6 divided by 64 times y to the power of 9. Sometimes we need to factor by grouping. Uh, this is a more challenging way of factoring, but I just want to uh, try and help you, help you with it. It's not very difficult as long as you recognize what the question wants you to do. So we can't, this is not a quadratic, and since it's not a quadratic, factoring it is not going to be straightforward. But I want, one thing I can do, I notice here, is if I, uh, I'm going to sort of, why we call it by grouping is I'm going to have two groups. We'll call this A and we'll call this B. And so I'm going to focus my attention on A and I'm going to try and make A look like B. I'm going to try and make A look like B. How am I going to do that? Well, if I just look at A in isolation, I can see that I could factor out a 2 and a B squared. Right? 2 um, is uh, can be divided into 10 or 8 and get a uh, whole number. If I do that, I'm left with 5B plus 4. And then over here we have minus v minus 4. Now notice that I've made group A look more like uh, group B. Now they might look the same, but they're not exactly the same yet. And one thing I can do to make them more similar is I could factor out uh, a negative, these negative signs. So I could rewrite this whole thing as 2v squared, 5v plus 4, plus negative 1 times 5v plus 4. Now they're the same. So I can have 2v squared, oh, you better be careful, minus 1 5v plus 4. So I've essentially factored out five v plus four in that, that whole bracket, this whole bracket right here. And when I do that, I'm left with 2v squared minus 1. Uh, and that whole thing is going to be multiplied by 5v plus 4. So here we are on Alex, and I'm going to put in the answer, but 2v squared, and then make it the right arrow, minus 1. Oh, and I forgot my brackets, so I'm going to go back and put brackets around that factor. And then another bracket, and I've got uh, 5b plus 4. And it looks, uh, looks a little funny, but I've got the right answer. The brackets are different sizes for some reason, but I guess that's just the way I typed it in. And we, we did it. We factored by groups. And so I divided the question into a group A and a group B, and then I made group A look as much like group B as possible. So we're told to combine like terms and simplify uh, this expression before us. So I'm going to start off by multiplying the factor into the bracket, and or what I like to call opening up the brackets. I'm going to open up the brackets. So I've got uh, negative 4 times negative 5u, so that's going to be plus 20u plus 4y plus 15y minus 9u. 
So a negative times a positive is a negative, right? We saw that in a previous question. And so I've got those groups, I've got the U groups, and I've got the Y groups. So I've got two uh, types of terms, and when I add them together, I'm going to have 11 U, 20 minus 9, plus 19 Y. And typically, the terms should appear in alphabetical order, so I've got the U ahead of the Y here. Now let's put it into Alex and see if we've got the right answer. So here we are in Alex. We had 11u plus 19y. And let's see what happens when we hit the check. Uh, we had the right answer. We collected the terms successfully.